Let's take a look at the different types of calculations you can do in REDCap. As a quick reminder, one of the best places to look up details about how to do different kinds of calculations is on the REDCap FAQ page. It's under the Data Collection Instrument Design section, Calculations, and it has the information on how to do a wide number of different types of calculations in REDCap. The first and simplest kind of calculation would be between two card-coded values, such as 2 plus 2. Here you simply type in both hard-coded values. REDCap will let you know if the equation is valid or not, and you can test what the result would be in different records. Obviously here it will be the same no matter what record you test it in. You probably will need to do very little of this kind of simple equation within REDCap. A more common type of equation will be calculating based off of a variable in your project. For example, my project has an age field where I ask how old the person is. If I want to know how old they will be next year, I'll need to know the value of that age field and then add 1. To find the age field, I'll put it in brackets and just start typing. And fields that match what I type will pop up and I can select. Then I simply add the operator and the hard code value that I want to add. And again, I can test with various records. You can use exponents in your REDCap calculation as well. So for example, if I want to know what height squared is, when you're using exponents, both the base and the exponent have to be in parentheses. And so I'd start typing until I find my height field, and close that in parentheses. The caret for the exponent, and then the exponent value. A very common equation people want to use in REDCap is BMI. You can find the equation on the calculations page. Here they'll write you through how to set it up and what the basic calculation is depending if your units are in metric or imperial. So here, to calculate BMI using the metric value, I start typing and find my fields and add my hard-coded values. And now I'm putting these in parentheses because of the order of operations. To make sure REDCap understands it needs to square height before it divides by the numerator. I can also calculate BMI using my height squared value. However, there's a catch to this equation. Back when we were going over setting up fields and doing data entry, I explained that although you see the numbers for calculations immediately, that's due to the JavaScript in the browser. They aren't actually sent to the server to be used until you hit the Save button. That means if I was doing data entry straight through on this form, there would be no value in my height squared field until I actually hit Save once. So in order to save any value from this calculated field, where I'm using height squared as part of the calculation, I would have to hit save twice. Because of this, we highly recommend that you don't do your calculations based off of another calculation. Go back to the raw fields and do your calculations off of that, like I did in the first BMI field. You can also do calculations based on if-then statements in REDCap. All calculated fields in REDCap can only return a number value, so my if-then statement can't return true or false. However, it can return 0 or 1. So for this simple if statement, I want to know if this person has said that their favorite genre is action. First I tell it what kind of statement I want here, an if statement. Then for my first argument, I give it the criteria it's going to judge on. If genre equals 1. I put in a comma, I, and then I tell it what value to return if that is true. I want it to return a 1 for true. 
a second comma, and then I tell it what value to return if false, zero, for false. And then I complete the parentheses, and REDCap shows me that the equation is valid. You'll notice that I put the one in genre equals one in quotations. That's because genre is a multiple choice question, and the codes for multiple choice questions aren't technically numbers, so they need to be put in quotations, single or double, just like you would any kind of text. And then I can test it with various records. So for example, in record 10, it is not true. If I didn't want to know whether they had picked just one answer in drama, but I wanted to know which answer in genre they had picked, then I might use a nested if statement. Nested if statements use the same three arguments. What is judging, what to return if true, and what to return if false. You just do it multiple times. So if genre equals one, then I wanted to return that one. For the false condition though, I'm going to go into a second if statement. So if genre isn't one, then I want it to look at if genre is two, in which case I want a two. Otherwise, if Now there are only seven options in genre, so with this final statement I have to tell it to what to return if all of those statements are false. And I'm going to tell it I want it to stay completely blank, to return a null value. There are three different ways to do this. One is to put in quotation marks NAN. The next is to simply put two quotation marks next to each other with no space in the middle or two single quotations. Now I have to close the statement with the correct number of parentheses. REDCap will let me know if the equation is valid, and I can test it on different records to see what result I get. There are a couple of different ways to add up a whole row of fields. The first is to use the sum function. So here I type sum, and then in the parentheses, I tell it what fields I wanted to add up. And I separate them out with a comma. As always, REDCap will tell me if this is a valid calculation or not. The other option is to simply add them up using the addition sign. The difference between the two is that summing them using the plus sign means that REDCap won't skip over blank values. It just won't return an answer. So if I'm doing a calculation where all the variables in the calculation have to have a value for the calculation to work, then I'll want to sum using the plus sign. If I'm doing a calculation where some of the values simply may not have a response, then I'm going to want to use the sum feature because the sum will simply skip over blank values. Finally, we have date diff calculations. With date diff calculations, REDCap will tell you how much time there is between two dates that you give it. There's a great explanation for doing date diff calculations on the FAQ page. So here it gives you the basic calculation. It shows you how to code the units that you want to respond in, if you want the date value to be in years, months, days, hours, minutes, or seconds. It's important that all the dates in your date diff calculation be in the same format, be it year, month, day, month, day, year, or day, month, year and you'll need to specify. Year month day is the default for REDCap. And then it explains the return sign value. If the sign value is false, it'll return the number as is, plus or minus. And if it is true, it'll take the absolute value, so you'll always get a positive number. They also have examples of a few different types of date diffs. The first and most common way of doing a date diff calculation is between two fixed date values that you already have in your project. 
For example, you might want to know how old someone was on the date of an appointment. Chances are in your project you've already collected their date of birth and the appointment date. To do this date diff calculation, you tell REDCap you're doing a date diff, and then you put in the early value and the later value. Tell it what unit you want the response in, in this case years, and what the format of the dates is, in this case day month year, and whether the assigned value should be true or false. Here I'm going to put it true because I want an age. Then I can test it with various records and see what response I'll get. If I want to round that to a whole number, I can just add the round argument in front. The first argument of the round is what the value is you want to round, in this case, my date diff calculation, and then how many decimal places you want in response. So now I'm getting nice whole numbers. If I wanted it to one decimal point, I could make that a one, and my responses would go to one decimal point. It is possible to do date diff calculations based on today's date. So if I want to know how old people are today, I still use the date of birth field, but instead of using any fixed date, I put the word today in quotations. The rest of the items are exactly the same. And I can still test it using various fields. The catch with using date diff calculations using the word today, it'll be whatever today is every time the record is opened. So if you open a record three years after your study is complete, it will show that this person is naturally three years older than they were on the day that you originally checked your data. If you save the record, then that new three years older value will be what, was, what is saved. Because of this, it's highly recommended that you stick to fixed dates with your date diff calculations. One more key feature that I want to remind people about when it comes to calculations in REDCap is Data Quality Rule H. The Data Quality Rules can be found under Applications on the left-hand menu. Data Quality Rule H will look for incorrect values in calculated fields. If you have any errors in the project, it will show you what they are, and it provides you with one button you can use to update the calculations for all of those fields. Anytime you might have changed anything within a calculated field, I highly recommend you run Data Quality Rule H before you export your data to make sure that all the calculations have been updated appropriately. That concludes the supplementary video on how to use calculations in REDCap. Thank you very much for watching.